Hello, my name is Liana Kiff. The first half of my demonstration today concentrates on working with our SQL integrator. The second half of the video walks through how to build an end user application with that SQL data source, including how to use nesting to manage complexity in your visualization. New users or evaluators of our software will benefit from seeing how easy it is to connect to an SQL database and how to see first results quickly and with no need to code in Java. We'll start with a new project and first we're going to add a module. We'll name the module something that makes sense for our data and then we're going to start by uh, checking the schema. You can see there's nothing in our schema. Now we're going to the integrator and we're going to add an SQL integrator. And I'm going to name this for the database I'm connecting to, which is the AdventureWorks sample data set from Microsoft. Now that we've added an integrator, we need to select a driver for the integrator. I'm going to select the driver for Microsoft SQL Server. And then I'm going to go grab my connection string and paste it in to the URL field. We'll enter the login details for this data source. And then we'll go ahead and test the data source and see if our connection works. You see that I'm getting a message here that I need to add the driver to my extensions. So I'm going to do that now. I'm going to choose the driver from the resources where I have it stored. You may need to download the driver you require from your data provider. Now we can press OK and you'll see we need to reload the project for the driver to be available. Now we can continue configuring our data source. So let's test the data source. You can see we've connected successfully. And now we can extract the schema. I'm going to work with the sales schema. We'll extract views, and now we'll see all the metadata for the schema. We don't need all of this, so we're going to deselect it. And now we're going to choose just the tables we're interested in, the sales order header, the sales person, the sales territory. Looks like there's a salesperson view here that could be very interesting to us, so let's import that as well. When we click Next, we extract the schema metadata, and we'll get a chance to review that in a moment. I don't want to get any other tables, so I'm going to leave no checked here. And now we can see the details, all the attributes that will come on the objects we've selected. There's a bit too much data here for our purposes, so I'm going to deselect some attributes in the schema. Now let's look at the other items we're bringing in. It looks like salesperson doesn't have any personal identifying information like names, but vSalesperson does because it's being brought in from elsewhere. But we're also getting a lot of other details we don't want, so I'm going to deselect those fields. Notice the warning. We'll talk about that in a moment. When we click Finish, we'll see that we're going to get four elements extracted through schema extraction. And now let's look at the bindings. This is how the schema for our model knows how to retrieve the data. Notice that the sales order header is correctly wired up to the sales order header table, and each element, each attribute, is wired up to the right column. But vSalesperson is not. That's what our warning message was telling us. Um, because it's a view, we have to do some things first in the schema editor. So let's take a look at the schema. We can click the button and show the drawing of the schema. We see that vSalesperson is not connected. Let's look at the details. First we need to add an identifier for this view to work correctly. And also we need to rewire 
our relationship from sales order header to point to the view instead of the salesperson element. So let's go find that reference and we right click and select edit. And then we can select the salesperson instead. And we know we just set that business entity ID. Now that we've done that, we don't really need the salesperson element any longer. That's just redundant for us. So we can go ahead and delete that from our in-memory model schema. And now we'll just click orthogonal layout to clean up the picture, and this is our schema. Our next task is to add some views. We're going to start with adding an inspector view. Uh, by adding an object inspector, you give yourself a tool for debugging because you can see what kind of object you're working with. We're going to use and we're going to check the box to use dynamic attributes. And that's all we have to do to use the inspector. Now we're going to add a drawing view. We're going to name the drawing view something sensible. Uh, in this case, uh, we're looking at supplier sales by territory, so that's what we'll type. And now we have three elements in our model we want to use in our drawing, so we're going to select those. We're going to start with the sales order, right click on actions, and say structural add node. This is going to put the nodes on our diagram. If we sl select the suggest, it'll give us a good name. But the ID isn't what we need to work with. We need to use the ID in the SQL data set so we can use the reference selector to find that. And now we're going to do the same thing for sales territory. Again, right click on action, choose structural add node, take the suggestion for the name, use the reference button to rewire the correct identifier for that table. Here we're going to select territory ID and we can take the default template. And then finally also for salesperson, same action. We're going to say structural add node, take the suggestion, correct the ID, double click on the correct value in the tree, and say OK. And now we have three elements that each have nodes being added to the diagram. To see the connection we care about, we need to add an edge. So we're going back to the sales order, selecting Add Edge, and we're having it suggest an identifier for the edge. We're going to modify that identifier because it doesn't describe this edge very well. This is an edge between the sales order and the salesperson. We can accept the generated ID in this case, and now we use the reference tool to wire up the source and target references from our model. And now our drawing will have an edge between every sales order and the associated salesperson. Now we can use the preview tool to take a look at what this is going to look like in our web browser. We can see that we have a number of boxes that all look the same and they're connected. As we click on objects, we can see the attributes in the object inspector, which helps us to identify them. But clearly, we need to do a little bit more to make the drawing useful. We're going back to the designer so that we can modify the drawing templates to differentiate the different nodes that we want to see on screen. We're going to right click on node and add a new node template. We're going to name that node template for the object in our schema that we want to display, in this case the territory. And now we can modify the details about how we want this object to display on the screen. First we're going to find a better label for this object and we're going to go to our schema tool to select the name field for territory. And we can see that it's not displaying quite right. 
We need to adjust the way the text fits in the box, and we also want to change other aspects of what it looks like, like the color. We can use the color picker uh, to select one of the color presets, or you can also use um, hex values if you prefer. Now we can see that the contrast isn't so great, so we're going to change the text color to white so that this will stand out well. And then finally, I'm going to want to be able to expand this node. We'll show you why later. And I'm going to change what it looks like when it's expanded as well. And here we can take a look at what that's going to look like. This previewer is very nice for designing your objects. The text is a little small, so we're going to increase the text size as well on the expanded node. You can see changes instantly in the preview. Now we're going to create another node template for the sales order. And we're going to again use just a simple shape. We're going to follow the same steps. We're going to set the text to display to something suitable for the sales order. There's nothing nice like a name. So we're going to check the purchase order number, which is probably a meaningful number to the people who use it. And we can see we have the same issue with the tight fit, so we're going to fix that. There we go. And now we have one last node that we need to create, which is a template for the person node. We're going to name the node person and select image as the node type instead. And I have an image selected previously that we're going to choose from a file so that you can see that you can use more than shapes to represent the nodes on your screen. I have a little image of a person here that we're going to apply. And again, you probably want to be able to identify this person by name. So we're going to use the editor to go find the name fields from the salesperson and use those name fields for the display. Now that we have our node templates, we're going to apply them to our drawing. So we go back to our drawing definition. We right click on actions and select template, apply node template. We can click on reference to make it quick and easy to find the definitions that we've created and select the right template. Now we'll do the same for sales territory. We're going to right click on actions, select template, apply node template, and do the same again. Use the references that are available to us for the territory object. And then finally, do the same for the person. And we're going to do one more thing. We're going to add a child drawing to sales territory. This is going to allow us to create a nested drawing, which can be useful to hide complexity. I'm going to select the suggestion for the sales territory ID, but select the right ID from my schema. And then for the parent, I'm going to select the node that is the parent of this drawing. And now I want to put some things in that drawing. And instead of having the sales order nodes just hanging around in the larger drawing, I want to embed them in this child drawing that I just created. So now I need to transfer the nodes to that drawing. I select the ID of the node that I want to move. And then I select the reference to the drawing that I just created. And that's where those nodes will go. We can also change defaults that control how the drawing displays. So now we're going to go up to the model rules and we're going to modify the layout properties, the drawing layout properties, to change the default layout for the drawings. And we need to change both drawings. We're going to try the bundle layout for this diagram because I think it will work best. And first we're going to change it for the root drawing. And we select that and we click OK. 
And then we're going to create a second rule just like it. Again, layout properties, drawing layout properties, select the drawing you want to modify, and change the default layout to bundle. So now both of our drawings will use the bundle layout style. Now let's take a look at our preview again and see what improvements we've made. Now we can easily tell people from territories. And if we take a look at one of these territories, we see that we can expand it and see the purchase orders embedded in the territory. Using nesting with very large data sets makes the drawings more usable. In this video, we started with an empty project connected to some SQL data and saw results very quickly. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you for joining us. Contact Tom Sawyer Software today to start your free trial of Tom Sawyer Perspectives.